common misconceptions about English speaking. Conquering the limiting beliefs international professionals often experience when working, speaking, presenting in English as a second language. Most of us experience a certain level of anxiety when speaking in public. However, for international professionals, it becomes doubly difficult to work in English. Here are the three most limiting beliefs. The first one is, my accent is so strong. I'm afraid to make mistakes. My mind goes blank or I can't find the right word during a presentation. In this education section, EIY and our guest speaker, Ms. Jamila, she will address some useful strategies to conquer these nightmares and embrace new skills needed to overcome these kinds of situations. Ms. Jamila is an English communication for recruiters and neural language coach accredited by the ICF International Coaching Federation. She specializes in helping international recruiters debunk their limiting beliefs, master clarity, and impact others in English. She comes from Greek. Uh, she comes from the Czech Republic and she is based in Spain. She has been teaching English since 2012 and has worked with thousands of clients from six different countries. Hello, Ms. Jamila. Welcome to the show. Hello, hello, everyone. And thank you for inviting me here. And it's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> yeah. So let's dive into our business. The first question for you is what are some common English usage misconceptions that you have observed second language learner often face? Mm, yeah, <laughs> that's a good question. So basically, um, you've already mentioned the most common, I call it limiting beliefs that um, English learners often have. And um, so yes, uh, number one, <laughs> my <laughs> accent, right? My accent is strong or nobody can understand me. Um, mm. Another misconception or limiting belief is um, my English is not good enough. Yeah? Mm. I don't know how to express my ideas. I cannot find mm. the right words when I need them. Another limiting belief, oof, I'm afraid of public speaking. What if my mind goes blank? What if I cannot find the right mm. word? What I'm going to do? Yeah. And another one, uh, yeah, I don't want to speak or uh, I'm afraid to make mistakes, so I keep quiet. Mm. These are the most common. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see. And why do we have those misconceptions, Miss? So uh, there are many different reasons, right, why mm -hmm. we have them and why they happen. Mm -hmm. um, the most, uh, I think the biggest um, or the most important reason and mm -hmm. one that we can actually uh, change, something that we can work on is um, our fixed mindset, right? Mm -hmm. So um, if you have this fixed mindset, you believe that um, your abilities or your skills are fixed, you were born with them, right? Mm -hmm were born with your talent uh, so you either you are good at something or you are not good at it so mm -hmm. <laughs> there's nothing that can be done about it mm -hmm. so and that's why often when we fail uh, at something um, we feel like it's super hard to uh, overcome it and that's why in the future we avoid situations that we uh, might feel embarrassed uh, at or we might fail. So the thing is, or the strategy that we need to do is to uh, develop our growth mindset, mm -hmm. right? And that's what I did as well, because I used to have the fixed mindset. Huh? But um, actually, it's not that hard to work on uh, developing the growth mindset. It's just you need to open your mind and mm -hmm. uh, realize that your intelligence is not fixed right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Your talents are not fixed. You can develop them anytime if you work hard, obviously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't come just like that. So hard work um, 
and um, ambition, right? That's what we need. And um, you need to understand that a failure is the opportunity to grow. Yeah. So it's a valuable lesson that uh, teaches you what to do or what not to do next time. Mm -hmm. And also feedback is super important. Yeah, when we have the fixed mindset, we're like, oh, oh okay, feedback, something negative. <laughs> I don't mm -hmm. want to hear it, but it's important. Yeah, uh, we need to ask for feedback. I always mm -hmm. ask for feedback. Yeah, my clients, I want to hear so that I can improve. Uh, next time. So yes, uh, developing the growth mindset is crucial yeah, for uh, working on our limiting beliefs. Uh, mm -hmm. And the first set, step I would say is getting out of our comfort zone. <laughs> That's what I'm doing today. I've never done a live stream like this before. I'm mm. so nervous. I'm anxious. <laughs> but, but that's it, right? Because yeah. Growing is not comfortable, mm -hmm. so it won't feel natural when you do mm -hmm. it for the first time. You will feel weird. I'm feeling weird. Yeah, but I want to do it. I'm mm -hmm. excited at the same time. And yeah, so getting out of your comfort zone. Hmm. Mm. So my further question for the point that you just shared is that at the time or at the moment that you decided to get out of your comfort zone, how can you take your courage in order to do that? Because if you can overcome that moment, then everything is really not challenging for you anymore. Mm -hmm. So how can you take courage at that peak moment? Okay, at the, you mean at the exact moment when you feel like you can't do it? Yeah. Um, hmm. Okay. Well, you just have to do it scared. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's like, I mean, it's difficult. And that is the exact mm. like moment, right? When you, um, that decides if you do it or not. Mm. And you can you need to decide if you stay in your comfort zone or if you get out and you just say okay i'm gonna do it even mm. if it's a complete failure yeah. and um the thing is um, even for example our uh perception of our performance is something completely different to what other mm -hmm. people think yeah, so, yes. for example, after this live stream, I might feel, oh, my goodness, that was a complete failure. But people, for example, who are watching us would say, no, it was great. Mm -hmm. And that's what often happens. Yeah, we um, um, see now I cannot find the right word. <laughs> we don't give us the value that we deserve. Mm -hmm. yeah? How we see us, it's not how other people see us. That's the thing. So mm -hmm. I always say, uh, do it, do it anyway, do it scared. <laughs> it will be easier next time. <laughs> mm, I see. Ms. Jamila thinks that you are an expert in English teaching. What are some of challenges of English mistakes that we usually use whenever we speak in English as a second language learner? Can you can you say it again? I mean, um, can you repeat the question? What are the mm. mis? Mm. Okay, uh, let me repeat the question one more time. So, because you are an English uh, teacher, so you've been teaching English for so long. What are some of common mis mistakes that us like 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 us? We are the second language learner, and we sometimes use some mistakes in English. And what are some of the common mistakes that you normally see in us whenever we learn English as a second language? And how can we overcome it in order to become an English uh, speaker, like a native uh, English speaker? Mm, okay, mm. so some common mistakes. Okay, yeah. well, um, it depends. Um, it depends on your native language because mm -hmm. um, I would say most of the mistakes are um, caused by the interference of our native language. Mm. So, you know, the native language grammatical structure 
has sometimes has a positive impact yeah, uh, on our learning, but sometimes negative yeah, because um, this can cause our mistakes in English. And um, um, yeah, so it depends. Yeah, I noticed Spanish speakers, my Spanish clients, they make certain mistakes. Yeah, because of Spanish, their native language. Yeah, Czech speakers will make uh, other different kinds of mistakes. Yeah, so I think the biggest um, player here, <laughs> the biggest cause is the native language. Yeah, our native language, and um, that's why um, I always uh, tell my students, my clients to compare the two languages. Yeah, compare English to your native language. Yeah? Because um, that's how we learn faster. Yeah, We look at the similarities, at the differences. And that's what our brains do anyway, even if we don't do it intentionally. Yeah, we always search for something to <laughs> catch, to hold of what is similar, yeah, to how can I understand it better? So, uh, especially uh, when we start learning the language, um, we should take advantage of our native language structure. Yeah, and um, it will help us because maybe the things that are similar, we don't have to learn them. We don't have to focus on them. Yeah. On the other hand, the things that are different in English, we know that we need to pay more attention to them because our brains, they don't know. It doesn't know it yet. Yeah. So we have to uh, create a completely new neural connections. <laughs> so it will be more difficult. Yeah. So that's why, um, Every learner is different as a person. Everyone is unique, obviously. But also um, speakers of certain languages yeah, have uh, make some uh, mistakes. They have it in common. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I understand your point. So we understand that sometimes we have those mistakes and we just use it to make us feel more inferior about our English speaking. How can we overcome those inferiors in order to get better in English? And the second question is, if you are on, at, on level, at a level of intermediate level in English already and you would like to upgrade your English ability to the advanced level, so in that case, how can we do that? Mm, yeah. Okay. So um, the first thing, like how can we overcome it? Okay. When we feel like um, we are a failure, we cannot improve. Uh, just don't um, like, <laughs> don't focus your mind on it because uh, I make mistakes, right? When I speak in English sometimes or in Spanish, everybody makes mistakes. Yeah. Native speakers make mistakes. It's normal, especially when we are nervous. But um, usually people don't pay attention to our mistakes. Yeah. What matters is the message. Uh, what we have to say, our expertise in our field. Yeah? And um, so when we give a presentation or a speech and um, we usually feel like everyone is watching us, all eyes are on us um, and we have to give the best performance ever or uh, every single mistake will you know, um, everybody will notice, but it's not the case because usually people don't even pay attention or <laughs> they're thinking about something else. And uh, yeah, you don't know what's on their mind, right? Usually they are not that concentrated on you. So <laughs> that's one thing. Another thing is you can also um, 
change the focus from you um, on something else. So when you feel, for example, oh, you forgot what to say next or oh my goodness, or how to say this. So what you can do is you can ask, right? You can ask the audience to help you. You say, hmm, um, they, they will be happy to help you out. Yeah? Or um, you can just skip it or just use another word. Say it in a different way. Yeah? Paraphrase what you wanted to say. Um, that's why it's important to learn a lot of synonyms yeah, when we learn English. Because when I forget one word, I have five more <laughs> that I can use. And or, yeah, as I said, just skip it, mm. move on to another topic. And then once you remember, say, oh, OK, now I know what I wanted to say before. Uh, let's have a look at it yeah. and just go back. Or um, you can, um, yeah, in the meantime, when you need to, uh, you need to, um, you know, focus on uh, your content, you need to order your thoughts. So you can ask for comments for questions. Yeah. And this will give you some time yeah, to put your thoughts in order. Because mm. people, yeah, people are commenting, asking. And uh, also when you are asked a question by someone mm. uh, from the audience, um, our nature tells us, okay, you need to answer that question immediately, right? But <laughs> what you can do again to gain some time before you answer to ask someone else, right, in the audience. You can say something like, wow, that's a great question. Uh, does anybody want to say something? Hmm? Before I answer that question, does anybody want to comment on this? Huh? And in the meantime, when people are commenting, you can uh, formulate yeah, your own answer. So, yeah, you can buy the time <laughs> to think. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm, and also, oh, another thing that I wanted to say. So when we are, I would say, intermediate learners, yeah, we are at this intermediate level of um, English learning, sometimes what happens is that um, we feel like we are stuck, like mm. we are not improving anymore. Mm. Uh, when we started learning English, it was like, wow, I've learned so many words and I could use them and I was making sentences and uh, describing pictures and I was making progress so fast and now my English is not changing. Yeah? Mm. And that's what happens at this level uh, because, um, you know, like 50% of English conversations <laughs> are made up of just like 100 words in English. Mm. That's why if we want to have some basic conversations in English, mm -hmm. we only need few words. So it's fast. Um, it's a fast process to learn these basic words. Mm -hmm. But then if we want to move from the intermediate level to the advanced level, mm -hmm. it's not, we already know all the grammar, we know vocabulary. So it's mm -hmm. not about yeah, learning uh, more grammar or mm -hmm. more words. It's more about, um, yeah, um, shifting your whole mindset, right? Mm -hmm. And working on, yeah, your presentation skills, yeah. yeah, or the skills that you need in your job, in your life, which is different for everyone, obviously. Uh, mm -hmm. So then it's not only about English, yeah, it's about your skills in English. Mm -hmm. So also you might change, you might need to change your strategy, your methodology. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So at the beginning of your learning, you were doing exercises maybe, yeah. but it won't help you now. 
because you already know. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, change the strategy and think of your goals, right? Um, and work towards th those goals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and the goal cannot be, I want to have an advanced level of English. It needs to be more specific, right? What I want to do with my English. What mm -hmm. I want, uh, yeah, for example, I want to give a presentation about, um, I don't know, a new recruitment strategy. <laughs> yeah, I think that I have uh, something to share in it in here as well, Jamila, because actually English is my, not my first language. And uh, Vietnamese is my mother tongue, so I have been struggling to study mm. English for the first days when I was at the high school. Because in Vietnam, the way that they teach us English is they just only teach us reading and grammar and writing. So actually, the Vietnamese is speaking and listening a lot. So the way we study English is um, like when I went to university is I try to speak more and listen mm -hmm. more. It means that um, I think one of the main reasons that stop us from being better at English is because we are afraid of other people's judgment. We just uh, be shy because uh, they they say they may say something to us that we are not good at English or we may say some wrong sentences. So just overcome those challenges in your mind. It's just like what you said, my set. Yeah, that is the first step to overcome when we would like to get better in English. And then when you become uh, like better at English already, you may we may want to study more vocabularies in order to know how we can use English as a precise way, mm -hmm. as the way that the native speaker usually use. So that I think that is the way that uh, we can think about that and we use it in order to study English. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, um, mm, I think I forgot to mention that. So when we uh, mm. experience this fear or something yeah. Yeah, that is uh, limiting us from doing something, mm. um, we need to um, explore right, yeah. this fear. So mm -hmm. we need to uh, challenge it. We need to know if it's really true. Mm. Is it just in our head or is it yeah. real? Sometimes mm. it is real. Sometimes yeah. it is just in our head. So mm. first separate. we need to ask others. Mm. Yeah. If my, for example, if I think that um, people cannot understand me, mm. yeah, then we need to ask uh, our friends, our co-workers, clients even, our mm -hmm. boss, whoever, it depends. And just listen to their yeah. feedback. We need right. more objective, um, more objective um, evaluation, yeah, of our skills. So mm -hmm. um, these days, for example, if I have some doubts about myself, about mm -hmm. uh, something I do, first I ask others. Right. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and then listen what they tell you. Right. So if they tell you, no, 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 yeah, your accent is fine. I understand everything you say. <laughs> then yeah. you know it's your mindset, and that's what you need to work on. Yeah. But if they tell you, oh, mm, right, you really are hard to understand. Yeah. yeah. Then uh, again, if we have this fixed mindset, we feel, oh my God. So mm -hmm. it's real. It's true. I'm never going to speak in public again. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, this is um, exactly what we shouldn't do, right? Mm -hmm. We need to uh, think what we are going to do about it. So mm. if it's the accent, uh, it doesn't mean we need to learn pronunciation again or uh, mm -hmm. modify uh, our accent or speak like a native speaker. We mm. don't need to have a British accent or American accent, not at all. Yeah, it's much easier to learn some strategies, yeah, yeah. how to sound uh, more clear, right? Mm. So what we can do, we can, uh, we can practice, um, we can practice, we can adjust our volume, yeah, maybe people cannot understand us because we mm -hmm. 
are too quiet. Or maybe it's because we speak too fast. Yeah. Maybe um, we need to learn how to pause. Mm. Yeah, sure. I think how we uh, teach public speaking to others because we want to teach them about volume pause in order to communicate their message better. And yeah. what you help, uh, what you help our learners is to help them become better in English. <laughs> okay. So I think that we are about to come to an end of our our um, live stream today, and I I see that we have some comments from our viewers. Uh, Miss Jane, she said that uh, she thinks first we should overcome our fear when we speak in English because I think that each and every one of us will have our own fear mm. of speaking in English. Yeah, and we need to accept our mistakes as part of us in order to grow, just like what you said. It's about my set. Mm. So, uh, um, Miss Mila, uh, do you have a final message to share with our viewers here before we're going to close our live stream session tonight? Yeah, well, uh, I would just say, just don't be scared. Yeah, <laughs> because I, but I understand. Yeah, because yeah. Look, I teach English mm -hmm. and I'm not a native speaker. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah. sometimes when I speak, I still mm -hmm. struggle with the English R, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I sometimes say, R, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and maybe uh, one year ago or three years ago, I mm -hmm. would never do this live stream because I was even more self-conscious about mm -hmm. my accent as well. But now I'm like, nobody's perfect. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's normal. You, mm -hmm. If you are a um, great public speaker, it doesn't mm -hmm. mean you, uh, you have to master um, all the sounds and have a perfect pronunciation. As I said, yeah, there are different techniques right? How to uh, come across as um, or how to speak more clearly, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so, yeah, just um, don't be afraid of making mistakes because uh, when you make a mistake, that's when you learn. Mm -hmm. And what usually what our audience sees uh is when we make a mistake and then we uh, of course we feel embarrassed right mm -hmm. we feel uh self-conscious and that's what they see yeah, they don't pay attention to that mistake yeah but they pay attention to how you come across mm -hmm. and that might cause the issue not your mistake but sure. that you are not confident and it might um mm. make you look like you you know like um you lack the expertise mm. yeah even though uh <laughs> for you the cause is somewhere else so yeah, yeah just yeah. uh get over it uh correct yourself if you cannot just forget it have a look at it afterwards yeah, but don't beat yourself uh, mm. because of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I see. I think that the imperfection appears in different aspects of life. So we are not perfect in English. Is it is easy to understand, and maybe we also imperfect in other aspects as well. But the point is that it is how you overcome it and you get better every day. So thank you so much, Miss Jamila, for. <laughs> our speaker here and share with us about fear in how can we speak better in English. And hi everyone, tomorrow we're going to have three, three live stream sessions, that's a lot. So we're going <laughs> to talk about how you can present to senior executives, it means that how can you present to CEO or maybe your managers. Another topic is we're going to talk about different ways to get better in public speaking. So you may want to schedule your time and go to EIY page in order to look for those events and you're going to get benefits from it. So once again, thank you so much, Ms. Chamila. You're welcome. It yeah. was great to be here. Thank you. Thank you. And <laughs> thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>